Okay, can you hear me? Okay. I am Salvatore Dario Minone, and I'm a software developer at Amadeus. Amadeus is, a, we are going to speak a little bit more in, in the next slide. And um, I live in France, but I am Italian. And um, I spent the five years of my life working on the cloud for Amadeus, but I also, other experience, I spent some time working for Amade in Amadeus business unit, and I have previous life in EGA, electronic design automation and finance here in Milan, which is also the place where I be graduated in computer science engineer. So for me, being here is like uh, being back at home. Thanks, Diane, for the invitation. Thanks, Tanya, for the invitation. Thank you, really. I appreciate it. Okay, in the next 20, 30 minutes of time together, I'm going to speak a little bit about Amadeus and what is Amadeus, more or less, and when everything about cloud started. This is a community meetup, so we're going to speak more particularly about the Amadeus and the community. Sure, uh, we have a lot of things that can be said, but I would prefer to focus on the community at least today in the future, or at least on, in the cloud, or in the web, you can find other presentation that we gave in the past that you are, will do in the future. We're going to speak about the community and we are going to speak also what we missed. Okay, in the slide, if we could come back, we are going to explain what have missed, some mistakes that we made, and some things that, okay, probably mi we missed something, but at the end of the story, for cultural reason, for business reason, for budget reason, we couldn't do differently, and simply the model that OpenShift and Kubernetes in general expose didn't fit that well with us, but it's the way it is. And in the last slide, when say keep on running, I will explain what we are working on and what is really what we are really focused on for the next month or year. Okay, what is Amadeus? Uh, I don't know if you know what we are. We are a pretty big com big company. We are more or less nineteen thousand all over the world, and. We are an IT travel actors, one of the major IT travel actors. I cannot say the major because I don't know very well the market of the, the, the brave competitors, I, but I know that we are one of the major. And uh, if you look at Wikipedia asking them what is the travel IT, what is the business, there are two or three things that you can learn. For example, there is a DCS, the Partial Control System, it's the software that handles the, the fact that the plane needs to go, <laughs> needs to leave the airport and land uh, in another airport. And there is also a lot of software that is handling all this. We do that. We have an EDCS in inside Yamadeus. There is also a reservation system, the, the computerized reservation system as well. There are some brave competitors that do that. We do also as well. And there is uh, also the GDS, the Global Distribution System, that is the system that distributes the ticket between the travel agency, the plane, and so on. We do that as well. So we cover all, <laughs> all, the, all the picture in the travel IT. And to do that, we need a lot of stuff. Um, on the slide, you can find the digit of all this. We are present in more than 190 countries, in Italy as well, here in Milan. And uh, we had, uh, at least in 2018, 1.8 billion of passengers boarded and 64 million of total booking processed, which is our pretty big values. And all these come at the price. The price is the complexity. We have more, more than 100,000 software load per year, which is pretty big, you know, because in, in a year there, is, there are 
360 days and a lot of software load per day. Here, software load is ex should be considered in a enlarged way. There's not only software load, but there also change configuration, network configuration, all that stuff, DB migration, and so on. But this is the, the machine is pretty complex. And uh, one of the things that should be considered when you think at Amadeus is the fact that in the pre GAFA, GAFAM age, the data center that we have in Erding in Germany was the biggest in Europe. Now there are other actors, Google and so on, that came to Europe. But we, had, for a lot of time, we had and we have still have the data center, a physical data center, where people pull the cables and so on. And this is also, this explains also some interest we have in, in, a, in a hybrid cloud today, because we do both. Not only we are trying to target in the public cloud, but we are also doing the, the cloud on-premises for our customers. And uh, this explains our special position. Okay, Amadeus, to be honest, is a 30 years old company, <laughs> so I'm not going to do the story of all this uh, and just try to keep it short. But everything for us, at least in from the cloud, started in 2014, which is more or less the year where Kubernetes and OpenShift started together, at least for Kubernetes. It was the summer of 2014, and we signed a project with a strategic project for Intercontinental Hotel Group in US when they asked us to supply the new infrastructure for, for their reservation system. And this will, has been done in the cloud and we were looking for a partner for, for the cloud. We spoke with multiple people, with a lot of cor brave corporates, but finally we met Red Hat. And uh, after a travel that I did <laughs> with other colleagues to Riley in US, it all ended up with a, with a signature. And uh, at the end of 2014, we signed in the Red Hat, the, uh, the partnership engineering with Red Hat company. And this fact changed a lot of things <laughs> inside Amadeus and some things also for Red Hat side. Personally, I did my first pull request to Kubernetes in 2014. It was the December, just before Christmas. And I always remember that because it's been an emotion. And um, in summer of 2015, now I'm, I'm sure about the dates, to be honest. Probably it was July Kubernetes and June OpenShift or something like that. Um, we started the... We entered in the, in, in the real release of OpenShift 3.0, and one year later we managed to win on the Red Hat Cloud Innovator Prize, which is always something that is still considered an added value for, for us in Amadeus. People co keep to recall me this fact. And for the future, I'm going to speak about the for the next for the in the next in the next slide. Okay, let's start to speak about what the Amadeus and the community. Amadeus is uh, an extremely strong, with the, culture, the, the corporate culture in Amadeus is extremely strong. A lot of people in Amadeus that are start to be old now, or seasoned, let's say, or always work it only for Amadeus. There are plenty of people with 25 years of experience that stay always in Amadeus. And this is create a very, very strong culture in for a corporate. So, but this creates also an isolation. The fact that uh, when I moved to Amadeus, I, 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 I had other experience as well. At the beginning, I was understanding nothing because in, in, in the industry, for example, a daemon is something that is specific software, but a daemon inside Amadeus is not the Unix daemon that you, most of you, the INETD, something like that, is, is, is something completely different. And this is, and this is 
special. And the first things that the community gave to Amadeus has been the unification with the industry. And now today in Amadeus, it's not completely finished, but is ongoing. When people speak about the service, now it starts to be an open shift to our Kubernetes service. And this is a really an added value, believe me, because, for example, the culture unification, it happens across regions. Before OpenShift, moving, it, moving from a team to another team was like changing a job inside Amadeus. And this is something that, okay, we can cope with, but the reality is hard. So for people spend a lot of time trying to understand just the jargon between teams, division, and so on. And this has been a real added value for, for us. Um, uh, in the Amadeus also, since the culture is so strong, uh, before OpenShift, we, we never considered something like canary testing, something like, probably not, not canary testing, but replication, replication, the replication controller, rollback. Uh, those kind of features that comes automatically with OpenShift, adopting, orphaning, I don't know. I don't know your your skill, but these are u basic use cases in Kubernetes and OpenShift. And now people in the Amadeus always speaks about adopting the pod, which is crazy. For all these years, all these years in in the distributed computing, never people talk about this, and now it happens. And this is thank you to the adoption of OpenShift. And more than that, now we start to rethink about internal practices. Now it happens often that people are asking for probe, liveness probe, readiness probe, and we spent a lot of time just to work around uh, this problem. The fact that we didn't have a probe has been a problem, has been a problem for a lot of time, and now every application starts to, do you have a probe? If you don't have a probe, you cannot load, and so on. This is an another added value. And we fundamentally managed to rethink our internal best practices. Again, this was comes from the fact that the company is a well-established practices and now is open thanks to OpenShift and Kubernetes adoption. Somehow we also gave something to the community. Uh, one of my colleagues helped uh, one Red Hat engineer, Paul, Paul Mori, which is, who is a friend, to, to, to design the secrets, the, actual, the, 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 Kubernetes, the Kubernetes secrets, which are fundamentally the OpenShift, the, the OpenShift secrets. Since we're there, since the beginning, we also did some bug fixing, adding some tests and so on, just simple grant job and workforce. And we push it, for example, to have observability. Observability, the initial use case was having the level of the pod exposed in, a, in the logs. Say, OK, I have this pod that is going to run on under these labels, for example. We just need a way to connect the pod information, the pod metadata, inside the application. That's the reason for, for downward API, for example. I personally helped by always Paul Mori <laughs> coded down Word API, or at least I contributed significantly. And since we're there since the beginning again, we spent some time on deploying. We pushed the first version of LibreOS, now has been deprecated, which is nice. And we had several contributions to OpenShift Ansible for the, the, uh, the, um, the OpenShift Ansible GitHub. The, but the contribution that we had, that we are pretty proud of, is to have pushed the requirement for CRDs. The original use case was having like a DAG workflow for in Kubernetes, natively in Kubernetes. For several reasons, which are totally understandable, we couldn't have that. And at the time, Brandon Burns, now that Microsoft, pushed the TPR, third-party resources. If people in the room are pretty young to Kubernetes, probably you will never heard about third-party resources. 
that's fine. But before customer resources, there were third party resources. But third party resources were so big that fundamentally, Red Hat folks, no, the guy at the moment is no more at Red Hat, but life is like that. Jordan Liggett explained to me kindly that there were nowhere to, there were no way to build the really a workflow, a DAG, a graph of job using TPR. So this pushed the, the customer resources use cases, which has been implemented by another Red Hatters, David Eats, that I greet for a lot of for his contribution that has been huge. And I know you know customer resources simply changed completely the the scenario of Kubernetes and OpenShift. At the point that today the idea is that everything is going to be a CRDs and this created the operators the, the operators are creating a lot of stuff. And we are behind all this. And we ask it to one, open, one of the OpenShift leader to Clayton Coleman, and which is who helped us a lot in this process. And we are very proud of this. And that's all. This is our small contribution, but it's just a way to to state what we did in the fi last five years. Okay. Um, the reason that for CRDs is that at the beginning we were trying to to create the workflow the workflow operator, and it's called controller because it comes from an area from a from an age where the where the word operator did not exist. It, it was just a controller because, okay, now everyone is speaking about operators, but it's just an extension of a of Kubernetes controller. It's just is an extension of a shift controller, a Kubernetes controller. And at the time, that and, the, and now it's published at open source on the GitHub, on Amadeus GitHub. And we then we start to implement other, other stuff like a Redis operator, like Canary. Redis operator obviously it handles a, cluster, a Redis cluster using the CRDs. Canary handled the development, the, 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 load, the, the load through Canary and has been presented at the KubeCon in Barcelona this year. And we have other operators as well that which are not open sourced for obvious reason because it just handle the internal technology. We have some, for example, for our ESB, the software bus, uh, is more an ingress controller than an operator. But anyway, we are doing a lot of stuff <laughs> on, on, on using CRDs and operators. Okay, this is the therapy slide. <laughs> if we have, what we have changed if we have known before. This fact came from the fact that we were there at the beginning and the beginning was tough. Today is still tough, but <laughs> at the beginning it was even more tough. The provisioning infrastructure for VMs, we had an internal knowledge of Puppet and we started with the provisioning infrastructure using Puppet, then using Terraform. And we are still struggling today for, with this. Um, we have some legacy, again, comes from the fact that we have <laughs> a long history in Kubernetes and OpenShift. And is there, I don't know if we had to do something different, but at least we had to share our use cases, explain why why we had to do, to do some strange things. And instead, we did not do that. Uh, it has been an error. Not the implementation as well. Not the implementation, really. But just the fact that we had to speak more to the community, explain the problem, and so on. And for that, OpenShift 4 for us is bringing the hope <laughs> to forget all this, or at least to simply, slowly the commission the actual cluster that we have with this legacy technology, and we are still waiting for, for, for that. Another thing that, I'm sorry to say that, I know that, <laughs> updating through Ansible can be a tough experience. We have a lot of discussion with, with, with your colleague in, in US with that. Again, 
we have to share more on this. We should share probably more on this today. And uh, OpenShift for always, <laughs> always keep to bring the, the hope for a better future, I would say. Ah, uh, our proprietary manifest files is the perception in the community, at least at the beginning, was that the manifest file, the blueprint, or whatever you want to call the YAML, the JSON, was hard to understand. So we had the same reaction, and we decided to create our own manifest files, which has been probably one of the worst error that we did, in, and we are still struggling with that. We are just decommissioning. And the point is that Helm was already there. Helm, I met, the first time I met Ma Helm, it was at the first KubeCon. It was not like the matter Helm that we have today with the tiller, the stuff. But, but we decided to, to bet on ourselves, and uh, we have this legacy today. OpenShift template was there as well, but we took an alternative path, we, and the final outcome is that it was wrong. Again, sharing our use cases, explaining more, at least, I don't know if, if we could change something, but at least, at least may mitigate the, the problem. Somehow, following the, 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 the previous slide, we, we, we started the production with OpenShift 3.0. At the time, Prometheus was not there. A Ocular, for example, for logging was not there as well. And we start to implement in-house technology, and uh, we are just decommissioning at the moment. We struggling on struggling we we have some bandwidth that is taken to do that and a cultural problem that we had is the fact that internally in amadeus we we need to do that in production everything must be fallback everything everything you insert a line in a db you have you need a way to come back to the previous one it's like a rolling update but not that rolling let's say a transactional way this, this is not so cloud as a practice in general, but is a well-established uh, and the culture inside Amadeus is really strong about all this. For example, in it, for the ATCD backup, until nine months ago, I don't know if the bug has been fixed, the gap has been fixed, I don't know if it's a bug. There's well nowhere if you move to another version of ATCD to come back to the previous one, which is considered not so well acceptable for us, but we cope with it. This is a cultural problem that we have, some friction that we have. And another point that I would like to, to state is the fact that working with open source for a corporate that is like us is something that we have to learn, is something that we need time, is interesting for developers, but it's even more interesting for PMs that set the roadmaps and so on with the budget and so on. It can be tough sometimes, can be ex the developer, in that case it was me or other colleagues, can be exposed to some friction because, okay, how can it, can it be that you did this and it's not still released? Uh, it's the way it is, it's the open source. It's people should start to enter in this mentality and uh, is like that. And the final point, again, OpenShift 4 brings hopes, is the cloud provider APIs. For a lot of time, people keep to think, keep to expose this metaphor saying, okay, the cloud provider is the new platform, hardware platform, the, and the Kubernetes or OpenShift is the new operating system. Okay, this is a way to see the things, but does not work exactly like that, in the sense that the cloud provider, as <laughs> was stated in, in previous presentation, are all different, and the concept most of the time are different. So, just wrapping all this behind an API most of the time is not enough. And we learned this in the hard way, 
Um, I'm not saying that there's not that never work this metaphor. I'm just saying that it should be taken with with carefully with with, with some attention. Okay, I don't think I'm so late. Um, in the next future, uh, in my team, in my group, we are seriously looking at the federation. We are seriously looking at a cluster registry, which unluckily has been full in some disgrace uh, today. Uh, but uh, we have plenty of cluster all over the world, and we start to have we start to need a yellow pages for the cluster. We were looking at the federation six, and I know that there are cluster registry. Probably now we are we are deploying a cluster registry internally. I spoke with all the people in the cloud. In the, in the multi cluster, in the multi cluster SIG. There are this difficulty inside, but anyway, this is the way, this is the things we are working on, and we are st start to working, we started already to work on OpenShift 4 on AWS and on GC as well. We have two teams that work on this. Um, we have an internal pilot project, pretty big. I cannot say a lot of things about it, but it's that is going to be done on OpenShift 4 in AWS. Uh, since we were used to build our cluster inside at home, we are seriously looking at OpenShift 4 on bare metal. It's going to be probably starting in one month or two months, something like that. But for 2020, you will learn about, you will learn more about Amadeus and OpenShift 4 on bare metal, sure. And some of the cloud that we are internally, and luckily not only on Red Hat OpenStack, but also on other, <laughs> other Red Hat, other OpenStack flavors, we have some project on OpenShift 4 on OpenStack as well. We are Sony Luxy op Operator Lifecycle Manager. Seriously, uh, I have two developers that are working on this. <laughs> and um, ensure the meshes to replace or at least to, ex to extend our internal technology. Um, we are waiting also the Red, Red Hat roadmap. That's why I was taking the picture. <laughs> but anyway, we have a weekly contact point with, with, with people in US. So we are, we are aware of most of the things. I don't care. I cannot say all. And this is just my final slide, just to tell you thank you. Thank you, really. I appreciate all this. That is my email. Ah, Amadeus is hiring. Like uh, every cloud company, <laughs> we need <laughs> we need ends, digits, and so on. Uh, finger, sorry, and so on. Uh, don't hesitate if you are looking for for new opportunities, a new challenge. There are some that are really challenging. And uh, on the right column, there are the people I would like to thank personally. That is not corporate staff, that is my, because are all the people that help me in this adventure in the last five years, always Clayton, all, all, all obviously Clayton, Paul, Dan, Derek, uh, David Eats, and, and so on. Really, thank you, and thanks again, Diane and Tanya, to, to invite me here. All right, well, thank you very much. <laughs>